Today, we're here on Croatia's beautiful southern Adriatic coast. We're going to be visiting not one, but two medieval cities. We'll also get a chance to enjoy a traditional song and dance performed by some of the locals. And later, we'll watch a demonstration on how hand-hammered coins and jewelry are made. All while traipsing about one of the most authentic and amazing medieval places you'll ever see. Our journey will begin here, in Dubrovnik's Old Town, a medieval city which is surrounded by a massive defensive wall. We will enter through this gate, one of only three entrances to the city. The walls that enclose the Old Town were constructed in the 14th and 15th centuries, and measure 2 kilometers, or 1.2 miles around and vary in thickness according to where the builders perceived threats. On the side where there is land, the walls are four to six meters thick, but on the seaward side, only one and a half to three meters thick. The height also varies according to the terrain. In some places, it reaches 25 meters high. Around the city used to run a moat that was armed with 120 cannons. Construction of the Old Town was completed in the 13th century, and it remains almost completely unchanged today. It is this amazing ancient city's turquoise waters and nearly perfectly preserved medieval city vibes that have earned it a UNESCO World Heritage designation. This fortified Old Town is filled with history and is frequently described as the Pearl of the Adriatic. <laughs> Dubrovnik's authentic medieval look and feel have also made it an ideal filming location for the HBO hit series Game of Thrones. Aside from its beauty, medieval charm, and state-of-the-art medieval defense system, the city of Dubrovnik is also known for its history of shipbuilding. Back down on ground level, within the city walls, we can check out some of Dubrovnik's amazing historic architecture. Here we see the cathedral, which was built on the site of several former cathedrals throughout history, including 7th, 10th, and 11th century buildings, and their 12th century successor, seen here in its current Romanesque style. Sadly, much of the original building was destroyed in the earthquake of 1667 and has been rebuilt a number of times over the years, creating layers and layers of architectural history. Now, we'll head back through the city and exit from the same gate we entered. Remember, there are only three ways into the city and three ways out. It's like a medieval Fort Knox. This is the gate we came in. Now you can see the view looking out over the drawbridge. And here's the crank to raise and lower it. Wow, what an amazing city. Coming up, we'll get a chance to check out this demonstration on how hand hammered coins and jewelry are made. And later, we'll be visiting the medieval city of Kotor. Now, I think I hear the song and dance starting. Let's check it out. Leave! 
Live museum. Come in time machine to show you. Yes. All right, let's head on to the next medieval city. Now we're heading about two hours south along the Adriatic coast to the country of Montenegro to visit another medieval city. Kotor is a fairy tale looking fortified old town dating back to medieval times. It is filled with winding cobblestone streets, vibrant town squares, well-preserved city walls, old fortresses, and churches. We'll begin our tour down here at sea level, and then we'll work our way up to the church atop the hill, where we can get some spectacular views. The town of Kotor dates all the way back to Roman times, However, it has been occupied by many other countries over the centuries. From the year 1186 to 1371, it was a free medieval city of Serbia. Later, it was under Venetian, then Hungarian rule for brief periods. An independent republic from 1395 to 1420, and then Venetian again until 1797. Between 1807 and 1814, it was occupied by France, and then Austria, until 1918. Here we see the Church of St. Luke, set in the picturesque town square, with the rugged mountains looming in the background. The tiny Church of St. Luke was built in the year 1195, and is one of the oldest churches in the country of Montenegro. Besides having survived numerous earthquakes, which have plagued KOTOR over the centuries, the church is also noteworthy for having been shared by both Catholic and Orthodox practitioners for almost 200 years. In the town's main square, a magnificent clock tower backed by mountains rises before you. One of the symbols of the city, it was erected in 1602, and although it leans slightly to one side, it too has survived numerous earthquakes over the centuries. Here we see the cathedral. Compared to other buildings in the city of Kotor, the cathedral is one of the largest and most ornate. The cathedral was seriously damaged and rebuilt after the 1667 Dubrovnik earthquake, but there were not enough funds for its complete reconstruction, leaving the two towers unfinished and therefore uneven. Kotor is the oldest town in the country of Montenegro and is now a state-protected historical monument. In 1979, Another major earthquake seriously damaged the town, but much of it has been restored. That same year, the town of Kotor was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now, let's make our way up to the church. Up here, we find the Church of Our Lady of Remedy, which was built to honor the Holy Mother by the survivors of the plague in the year 1518. Behind us, ah, Schöne Ausblick, a beautiful view. Kotor is such an amazing city, as is Dubrovnik. If you ever have a chance to travel, I highly recommend either of these cities, or even better yet, both. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Once again, thanks for watching.